Y'all want me to talk about Clive Davis? Okay, let's do it. But I'm telling y'all right now, this story already took a turn that I was not expecting. So Clive Davis is over Arista, which is over Diddy's Bad Boy record. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came about. Gender, and I did find that I could be attracted uh, to a man, while I still am very attracted to a woman. I just kind of shot a shot because my focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why. Tell us why. Because he's a. And he's using music and entertainment to say fucking treasure. These have been killing people for years. So it turns out P. Diddy, the man behind Bad Boy Records, allegedly climbed the ranks of the music industry by doing favors for none other than Clive Davis himself. Clive Davis, the mastermind pulling the strings, has long been rumored to have had a secret relationship with Diddy spanning over five years. And while Diddy's success in the industry is undeniable, there's always been some confusion about how he achieved it so easy. So Jaguar Wright doesn't beat around the bush. She's saying Diddy's been pulling strings backstage, using his music catalog to get rich and powerful. But what's the deal? that got him to the top and did it involve something deeper. People are saying that Alita has been trying to sacrifice Diddy for a long time now and it looks like that time might be now. It seems like at the end of the day, Diddy's evil can be traced back to the man who molded him, Clive Davis. Diddy isn't just another big shot in the music biz. He's a walking, talking testament to everything that's messed up about the industry. But here's the kicker. Behind every monster, there's usually a mentor who helped mold them into the beast they are. Enter Clive Davis, the heavyweight music exec whose name's practically synonymous with legends like TLC, Whitney Houston, and Brandy. Back in the 90s, when hip-hop was bubbling up, Diddy caught Clive's eye. See, Diddy had this vision that hip-hop was gonna blow up big time, and he managed to sell Clive on the idea. Next thing you know, Clive's bankrolling Diddy's bad boy records, taking him under his wing and teaching him the ropes. With Clive's backing, Diddy skyrockets to hip-hop mogul status, reaching heights he never could have dreamed of without Clive in his corner. Now here's where it gets shady. Industry whispers have been swirling for ages about what really went down between Diddy and Clive back in the day. See, it's not just about music. Rumor has it that Diddy went above and beyond to please Clive, if you catch my drift. Apparently, Diddy got his start by uh, getting down on his knees for Clive Davis back in 94, which apparently birthed Bad Boy Records. There's talk that Diddy got cozy with Clive in more ways than one, allegedly even keeping their romance on the DL for five long years. And just when you thought it was all hearsay, Clive goes and spills the tea himself in his memoir. He straight up admits he's into both men and women, confirming what many suspected all along. Well, first of all, I was only turning to buy after my second marriage failed, so that it was not an issue through my life. Not, neither of my marriages were affected. I was totally attracted to women. Uh, when the marriage failed uh, in the mid-80s, I opened myself up to the possibility that I could have a relationship with a man, as well as the two that I had with a woman. Suddenly, those rumors about Diddy paying a dark price for his success don't seem so far-fetched. You're in a relationship with a man right now. Do you, right. do you think that, that, do you hope that by he will be better understood as a, as a result of I your honesty? I honestly do. I honestly do have that hope that that is the case. I know for me, if any reason this relationship were not to continue, I'm still attracted to women so that it, you don't have to be only one thing or another. For me, it's the person I'm in a monogamous relationship. I respect monogamy. Clive's been pretty quiet about who his partner is, but everyone knows Diddy's been hanging around him a lot at fancy events and stuff. They're tight, and it's not hard to see they've got a real bond going on. Clive's been pretty open about his own love life, but Diddy's been keeping mum, and that's got people talking. I mean, we've got stories popping up left and right about Diddy's encounters that make you raise an eyebrow. Like, did he try to make moves on 50 Cent? And what's with the whole towel situation with Ja Rule? And let's not forget the accident accidental slip up about waking up next to Usher. My brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's out. 
I mean, I mean, back in the day. But wait, there's more. Remember Jaguar Wright? She's the one who blew the lid off Diddy's shady dealings with artists, claiming he's got a taste for some pretty scandalous stuff. According to her, there's this lawyer who spilled the beans about catching Diddy and singer Christopher Williams in a compromising position during a business meeting. Um, she witnessed something. She witnessed something that was disturbing to her. But what was really disturbing to her was the conversation that she had with Diddy after. See, Christopher Williams, I don't know, I guess he wanted to sign. I don't know what happened. But Puff was supposed to be giving him a demo deal, and he gave him a demo deal. And I guess it was supposed to turn into an album deal, which that never happened. Um, but this young woman walked in to get approval or some paperwork, see. And uh, when she walked in, the door wasn't locked. So she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing for on Puff. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. She just walked out. And while it's all still up in the air, it's not exactly shocking given Diddy's track record. It's like the floodgates of truth have burst wide open, with more and more voices stepping forward to spill the beans on Diddy's not-so-secret activities. And it all started after Cassie paved the way for everyone else to speak up against him. So we all know Cassie decided to take legal action against Diddy, slapping him with a lawsuit, all for the emotional roller coaster she endured during their decade-long relationship. Now, while some people might have had their suspicions about Diddy being a shady character, character, nobody was really throwing shade his way in the industry until Cassie decided to spill the tea. According to her, it wasn't just about Diddy putting hands on her. She was accusing him of some seriously twisted stuff, like turning her into his own personal love puppet. Cassie claims Diddy would set up these freak offs where she'd be getting cozy with hired help, while Diddy played the role of the voyeur, chilling in the corner. And get this, she says he had her on some heavy substances just to keep up with his wild fantasies. Now when this bombshell hit the media, everyone was expecting Diddy to face the music. But guess what? Dude decides to settle the whole thing out of court. And the cherry on top, he's reportedly throwing around stacks of cash, maybe even upwards of $50 million to make it all go away. But hold up, if Diddy's innocent, why cough up the cash to silence Cassie? And even though Diddy's trying to sweep this under the rug fast, it's clear he's got some serious clout. I mean, he's got the power to make NYPD investigations vanish into thin air. And let's not forget about Cassie's safety in all this. She had the foresight to slap a restraining order on Diddy after they called it quit which might be the only thing keeping her out of harm's way. But make no mistake, if Diddy's looking to make her disappear, he's gonna play the long game, just like he did with Kim Porter. We're talking waiting it out, laying low, and then bam, blame it on whatever's convenient, just like last time. Now take Exhibit, for instance. He's out here claiming Diddy dragged him along to a gay club for a night of partying. Hey, Puffy calls me outside, he's like, hey man, you know, the um, that, that girl you, you know about the girl you, I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, everybody know, but you know what I'm saying? What's happening? You know what I'm saying? He's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what the you mean that's a, the devil? The devil got a pretty mouth. Yeah, and I was like, what you mean that's the devil? <laughs> you know, and then he was like, yeah, man, she, she videotaped you with your fingers in the boot. That's a new movie. You know movie. what I'm saying? I was the like, what? Sucked. He's like, hey, yo, what's up? What you talking oh, about? We oh, rewind, rewind. Yeah. We we <laughs> I heard a a finger in her yeah. story, what? She said, he, 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 he so Puffy tells you he that gonna, she... She will videotape you with fingers in the... And I was like, what the... Does that mean? Yeah, you know what does what I'm that mean? Confession. So then, so then I go back in the house and I ask her, "What the f are you talking about?" He, he but you said, don't "You're ask a him? filmer." No, I, I did ask him. He's just like whatever. He, <laughs> he went off and did his. And he's not the only one pointing fingers. Comedian Fat Jew's got a story to tell too, and it's a juicy one. According to Fat Jew, he stumbled upon a rather intimate scene at a Miami bash thrown by none other than Diddy himself. Picture this, Fat Jew's wandering around, trying to find the bathroom in Diddy's swanky mansion, when he accidentally stumbles into a room straight out of a Roman fantasy. There's a bunch of dudes lounging about, all very cozy if you catch my drift. And right in the middle of it all, you guessed it, Diddy and Felix de Housecat, getting cozy with a bottle of Hennessy and each other. God, I went to a party on Star Island in Miami uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. I mm -hmm. had no business being there. Mm -hmm. I was with a famed uh, house producer who was DJing the party. Sure. And I will keep his name out of it. Yep. And I took a whole bunch of ecstasy because everyone there was taking ecstasy. It was basically me and like beautiful like ethnic models, mm -hmm. like just beautiful women. So I'm, I'm like kind of stumbling around. It's like, you know, it's all like, you know, my man is telling me that like, you know, every third person is some executive, mm -hmm. you know, got behind the scenes guys who I don't recognize. It's a high end crowd. Very high end. And okay. there's no joke. There's maybe a hundred. But I open yeah. a door and in that room, there are 
a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they're all kind of like very like Romanesque, like laying about and, you know, kind of like very like kind of leaning on each other. Not really spooning, but like conversationally spooning. Like if you were spooning, but facing each other and like leaning up on her side. Yeah, it would almost be the prelude to it. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Oh okay. my God. It was so prelude. Okay. So explain. So, so I look. So I have. I'm there for a very brief amount of time because I open the door and clearly I'm not supposed to be in there. And I look, and who is lounging in my direct eye line? Puff Daddy hmm. and Felix the House Cat, famed house music producer. Yeah. No, I know are who that is. Basically spooning each other. <laughs> I swear to God, they're basically spooning and they're drinking a glass of Hennessy. And they're, like, sharing it. He's out here spilling the tea on what he saw, and it's got him sweating bullets. I mean, wouldn't you be nervous if you stumbled upon the kingpin of the music industry in a compromising position? But Fat Jew's playing it smart. By putting it all out there on a public podcast, he's banking on safety in numbers. After all, ain't nobody gonna mess with the guy who's shouting the truth from the rooftops. Remember Jay Versace, the Vine sensation? Yeah, he's got a story, too. It all happened after a bunch of women posted a video of them jumping around on Diddy's bed. Now, Jay, he could relate to them so he dropped a comment that left everyone shook. According to him, Diddy invited him over to his mansion during the peak of his career, only to allegedly bend him over that same massive outdoor bed where Jay saw women jumping around. Now all these shady dealings? Yeah, they're like a family tradition passed down from Diddy's mentor, Clive Davis. Seems like old Clive taught Diddy more than just the ins and outs of the music biz. He schooled him on how to make problems disappear too. Some even speculate that Clive's hand might have been behind the downfall of artists like Whitney Houston. While most of the world knows her tragic end as a result of substance abuse, there's a chilling theory floating around the web that suggests otherwise. According to some fans online, Whitney's death wasn't a result of her own struggles, but instead a calculated move orchestrated by none other than Clive Davis himself. The whispers suggest that Whitney was seen as expendable, a relic of the past in an industry constantly hungry for fresh faces. And so, the theory goes, Clive saw fit to eliminate her, clearing the path for newer, younger talent like Brandy to take the stage. But it gets even more sinister. An investigator claims to have uncovered evidence suggesting foul play in Whitney's death, defensive wounds that don't quite add up with the official narrative of her death. And the timing of it all is enough to send shivers down your spine. Clive Davis hosting a pre-Grammy party in the very hotel where Whitney's lifeless body was discovered. Now that's just messed up. People couldn't wrap their heads around how they were popping bottles downstairs while Whitney's lifeless body was upstairs. Someone wrote, what kind of friend would be able to have a party as the body of Whitney Houston is still in the building? Just sick and very disrespectful to Whitney and her family. I mean, how does one do that? It's very scary to think that this man claimed to love Whitney and the thought never crossed his mind to cancel the party. No, he just cares about the money. Just revealing that it never crossed his mind to cancel this event just proves that he's 100% heartless. The only thing he loved was the fame and fortune Whitney vastly provided him with. Like Houston's body remained in the hotel room for hours while the party raged on downstairs. Clive tried to do some damage control, claiming it was meant to be a tribute to Whitney. I was there that historic night, that party that you throw every year and the tragic day that she died, that there were many. Why did you let the party go on? Of course, this is a personal thing, but the Grammys for the next night, you don't cancel. You turn an evening into a tribute. You so you did a magnificent evening. Evening into. Did you give a thought to canceling? Never. You never thought. Never. Could never. you? Did you ever think? I know the family did not want me to give a thought. Didn't to can No. No. But no one's buying that. Some of her close friends threw some major shade at him, calling his decision insanity. According to them, it was the complete opposite of what Whitney would have wanted. You were, I think, going to go to the Clive Davis party. Yes. It was a surreal event where Whitney's body was still in the hotel and there was this sort of party where apparently half the room were in tears, the other half were kind of partying. What did you feel about that? I thought that was complete insanity. Um, and knowing Whitney, I don't believe that she would have said, the show must go on. She's the, she's the kind of woman that would say, stop everything. Uh-uh. I'm not going to be there. You know, um, I don't know what could motivate a person to have a party in a building where the person whose life he had influenced so, so enormously and whose life had been affected by her. So they, they, they were like, 
I don't understand how that part not, I, And then there's the cryptic note Whitney allegedly passed to Brandy just days before her passing. The fans noticed too, saying, Brandy's face after she read the note says it all. Now let's connect the dots and dive into Diddy's part in this whole Clive Whitney saga. Kim told someone very close to her that she thought he was trying to kill her. Mm. Just like Whitney Houston sent a note and said that they was trying to kill her. Mm. Just like Janis Joplin sent a note and said they was trying to kill her when Clive Davis had only been managing her for a year. I'm going to find that promissory note, Clive. I promise you. I'm going to treat this shit like a treasure hunt. These fuckers been killing people for years. What many don't know is that Diddy made an appearance at Clive's Grammy party on the night Whitney died. Clive even picked Diddy to give a speech about Whitney, despite them not being close. Fast forward a few days, and Diddy finds himself in the hot seat on Ellen's show, dodging questions about the party and his speech. You gotta admit, it's kind of strange that Clive chose Diddy to speak at the party when there were others who were closer to Whitney. But wait, there's more. The morning after Whitney's death, Diddy ended up in the hospital with a severe migraine after hosting another wild post-Grammy party at the Playboy Mansion. And Whitney isn't the only casualty in this. Lisa Left Eye Lopes, another talent under Clive's wing, met the same mysterious end. And the pattern doesn't stop there. Just look at Diddy and the trail of tragedy that seems to follow in his wake, from Biggie to Kim Porter and beyond. Diddy's got the whole industry under his thumb, but not everyone's buying into his game. DJ Academics, for one, seems to be the one voice brave enough to speak out about Diddy's shadiness in the Cassie saga. But even he's only doing it out of fear. Diddy's got enough power to make even the boldest hesitate. Just listen to Academic's account of a party invite straight from Diddy himself. It's got all the makings of a setup, with Diddy's intentions feeling more like a threat than a friendly gesture. But here's where it gets real interesting. Diddy's power play isn't just about silencing Cassie. It's a showdown between him and the true elite pulling the strings behind the scenes. See, ever since Diddy dared to take on the bigwigs with lawsuits over racial discrimination, he's been a marked man. And now, as the truth about his dark deeds comes to light, it's clear he's in for the fight of his life. But let's not forget the casualties along the way. Rumor has it, Diddy's not above using fear and intimidation to keep his circle in check, from dangling whale over a balcony to making Kid Cootie's car mysteriously blow up for dating Cassie. It's a chilling reminder of just how far Diddy's willing to go. Now, recent events have put Diddy in hot water again, with yet another lawsuit thrown his way, this time by Rodney Lil Rod Jones. It's his fifth legal dance since November. The fans have been connecting the dots between the people who allegedly helped Diddy run his operation, as Lil Rod referred to it, and Diddy's rumored sugar daddies. Lil Rod's lawsuit spills that Diddy's crew of alleged accomplices included some big names from the music biz. They allegedly helped cover up the whole operation, making sure there wasn't a visible paper trail left behind. And get this, the lawsuit claims that Diddy's powerful pals, including Fahim and Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, were the ones paying off law enforcement and greasing the palms of the S workers with cash. And Jaguar Wright? Well, she's suggesting that Diddy might have learned some unsavory skills from his late mentor Andre Harrell, the big wig behind Uptown Records. But get this, Andre supposedly learned the ropes from none other than Clive Davis himself. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a okay. And he's using music and entertainment. Now, is this, is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think it's really something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored victimized. by Clyde Davis. And when the feds raided Diddy's mansions, people thought it was finally over for him, like they seemed all up in his business, finding all the proof they needed to bring him down. But when Diddy was vacationing looking like he had no bother in the world, it got fans very suspicious. Like, what's he hiding? Enter Eddie Griffin, who just dropped some bombshell news, claiming the whole raid was staged and there's something deeper going on. So here's the deal. He's spilling some serious tea, suggesting that Diddy is being sacrificed by the head people at Universal. 
Universal Music Group. Homeland Security rolled up with tanks, practically a military operation just for one dude. I mean, who has 50 troops at their mansion? According to him, the recent raids on Diddy's Miami and Los Angeles homes were nothing but a stage spectacle. According to Griffin, Diddy must have had an inside man tipping him off because he managed to jet off to Miami just in time to dodge the feds. Diddy is on the run. He jumped on a jet, paused in Miami, and the feds were there in Miami. Somebody tipped his brother off, because how did he just jump, happen to be on a plane the day before they gonna raid his property? He got an inside man there at, at the Federal Bureau of Homeland Security. One of them motherfuckers. Now he must have zailed every last one of them feds, 10 million each because they let him get back on the plane to Antigua. Griffin is fuming about the way they tore up Diddy's house and didn't even bother to put stuff back where they found it. He's calling them out big time. And get this, he's onto something fishy. Who tipped off the camera crews about the raid? Someone high up the ladder, maybe even the head of Universal Music Group. They just gonna raid a man's properties, but not raid him. They raid a nigga's property, they coming to get you too. I don't know how this man's still on the loose, but you know, he got the dough and he got the know. If it's really just a, a quick, fast hit on the motherfuckers' property, nigga, you ain't gonna call the press and say, we about to hit Puffy's crib. You're just gonna hit the crib. And they're just gonna have to hear about that through the grapevine and rush down there as quick as they can. But no, we seen the aerial shot of them driving up being in the industry means you're plugged into the grapevine, and word on the street is, either Diddy really messed up and it's payback time, or he ticked someone off and now they're coming at him with everything they've got. Driving at this motherfuckers crib, somebody's behind it, somebody way up the ladder, and I think that ladder is the head of Universal Music Group. He called in his favors from it. His friends. Griffin ain't afraid to point fingers either. He's got Clive Davis, the head of Universal Music Group, squarely in his sights. Griffin's theory? Davis sacrificed Diddy to save his own skin. Clive Davis, yeah, that's 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 the monster. And the the, the head of Universal Music Group, he's uh put Diddy up and, and they 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 sacrificed and Diddy. They, they, they said you gotta take this shit, we can't be involved. Diddy's apparently been filming every session, so they're raiding his house to get those tapes because they think he's trying to blackmail them. But Diddy's smart. He filmed every session. He was f***ing Clive and the motherfucking freak boy that run uh, Universal Music Group. Now that's why they raiding the house because they got friends in Homeland Security and the feds. And they said, get in there and get them tapes from this nigga. He trying to blackmail us. That's what I believe is going on. The feds are probably knee deep in those secret tapes, building a case. See, they covering up their whole shit on that Epstein bullshit. Diddy got to take the fall for all that shit. So now, smoke and mirrors, it's the freaky not the freaky white people. Yeah, some niggas on Epstein Island too, but no, this is all here. And now, clean up the white shit. But here's the thing, despite all the rumors swirling around, Diddy's keeping tight-lipped about his own truth. Bottom line, it looks like there's more to Diddy and Clive's relationship than meets the eye. Whether they're just tight professionally, or if there's something deeper going on, well, that's still up for debate. But one thing's for sure, this ain't your average mentor-mentee situation. Diddy might be calling the shots now, but he learned everything he knows from the master manipulator himself, Clive Davis. He's the puppet master pulling the strings, and Diddy's just a pawn in his twisted game. And if the rumors are true, Diddy's shady tactics are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the dark side of the music industry. Do you think Diddy's going to expose Clive to save himself? Let us know what you think and don't forget to watch this next video.